Okay, hey, what's up? How's it going? It's, uh, it's Krish. You're watching a road reflection situation. Probably wondering, wait a minute, Krish. It's a Monday, and you're in your car, which is normally like a Saturday thing now. What's happening? I'm so confused. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, irritated by this change in my daily routine of watching your big dumb face yell into a camera. How dare you, sir? How dare you change things up on me? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you're not that angry about it. Uh, I'm back in the car, uh, cause it's, uh, it's a, it's a bit of a, bit of a special day that I think people like to celebrate. Uh, and have a good time with. So I decided, um, why not uh, celebrate with them? So today is um, is is uh, is old 420, uh, and uh, uh, I figured I would tell you guys uh, two two quick little stories uh, involving uh, the old cannabis plant, um, and uh, and it's also uh, at Road Reflections number 100, big big old 100 episode. Uh, so, you know, um, figured I would, uh, I would go back to the classic, go back to where things started, uh, and, uh, do a, do a, do a regular old story today. Um, give you my thoughts, uh, on, uh, on the notion of legalization, tell you two quick stories that I think you guys are going to find, uh, entertaining. Uh, whether whether you partake in the old cannabis or not, um, you know. Let's and, uh, and and we'll start we'll start the usual way with uh, with check in. Uh, it's been a it's been a morning. I will I will say that it's been a, a bit of a strange morning. Um, not strange in, uh, like a uh, I don't know. It's, it's not weirder than any other morning has been in the last four or five weeks, right? <laughs> um, but um, I woke up with a bit of, bit of uh, 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 overwhelming anxiety. Uh, I felt very overwhelmed uh, waking up this morning. Um, and I wasn't particularly sure why. I think I have a little bit more of, of clarity in, in terms of why uh, now, now that I've had time to think and process what was going on. Um, and I will talk about, uh, you know, all of the, uh, uh, that reason in, in just a second. Um, I also had, like, this weird existential dread of this whole, like, what am I doing? Why am I even feeling anxious? You know, kind of went into, into that mode a little bit. Uh, of uh, what's the purpose kind of thing, uh, which fortunately, I mean, that sort of stuff, for me, every time I get to that point, you know, I'm, I'm, I've felt that enough in my life where I know where that comes from, and I think it's just like uh, a lack of confidence in what I'm doing, and I have to remind myself that that is... Uh, that's silly, uh, because uh, one, I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm having a good time making these videos. I'm having a good time, um, you know, doing the research and learning. Uh, I'm learning with you guys about, uh, you know, the history and, uh, and uh, uh, following, following the news, trying to make heads or tails about uh, what is going on uh, in our world. So I'm having a good time doing it. It seems like you guys are too, because uh, you know I do see you guys participating in the old comment sections and the old chats uh, when I premiere these videos, so I can I can hang out with you guys and, and follow along on your thoughts and stuff. So that's uh, pretty fun, pretty fun. I've uh, I've I'm I'm so you know the existential dread. I, I, it's very easy to dispel that for me. For me, it's been very easy to dispel that. Uh, cause the proof is literally right in front of me. Like I can literally go, uh, to virtually any of the videos that I've done over the course of the last five weeks. Um, and, uh, and basically be like, Hey, look, th there's this person commenting and this person commenting and, uh, you know, Hey, here's a, here's a new fan. Here's a new subscriber. Here's a, here's, 
Here's 28 likes. Here's somebody telling me that they enjoy it. Here's somebody donating to, to, to the thing. Um, you know, so that, that, that is very cool. And it makes me, it gives me a nice reminder of, um, uh, you know, existential dread. You're wrong. Uh, you are wrong. So, um, that, that is, uh, you know, taken care of. As far as the overwhelming anxiety that I felt, um, I think that's coming from just the stuff that I'm undertaking. Uh, and it's, again, it's nothing, uh, that is beyond the scope of what I would normally do in, in situations like this uh, and beyond the scope of what I would like to do. So, uh, you know, I'm working on two or three different forkful of noodles pieces that are coming along pretty well. And basically I thought of like what that process was going to be of recording this thing, putting together, um, putting together the, the clips, putting together the screenshots and the production value that's going to go into it. And, and it's nothing beyond what any other episode would involve. Um, I've talked about this before. Forkful of Noodles is, is going to become a more produced show. So there's going to be a longer span of time in creating these episodes. That's sort of just the way that, that the show has evolved. Um, there is a lot more in-depth research. There's a lot more historical research to be done. There's a lot more writing to be done. And being that I am a uh, one-man working machine, um, you know, it takes me a little while to, to get to that uh, get to that point. And that's okay. Um, you know, this this so so there so there's that. There's the daily videos. Um, the things that I would like to talk about in these videos in the upcoming uh, few days. And then Taboo Table Talk, uh, one of the things I'm doing with Taboo Table Talk is um, I'm trying to gather, one, I'm just trying to schedule interviews just so I have a bank of interviews like I did right before we got into the quarantine. And now, you know, I'm down to one or two remaining. Um, And, uh, yeah, I I want to I want to highlight small businesses that have been affected by this uh, this crisis that we are in, um, and how they've been affected, what they're doing to to you know within within their within the confines of their own business structure to um, adapt to the situation, um, and then. Uh, what other people can do to kind of help them uh, get through this situation. So that's a project that I've begun to undertake and I've scheduled a, a, you know, a few interviews and none of these are like super long. I'm basically looking at 15 to 20 minutes. Tell me what your, what your thing was. Tell me, you know, basically what I just, what I just said. Um, so that's that. Uh, I've also scheduled a bunch of uh, regular interviews that I'm excited about. I'm scheduling, I'm trying to schedule even more. Um, and then I figured out what my format for the Zoom show is and scheduled a test show uh, where the space is limited to 10 people. So that's a test show, 10 people. Um, and tickets are available for that right now. So if you are somebody that has been looking for uh, some stand up, um, some storytelling stuff for me, um, you know, um, and I, I know I put the call out maybe a week or two ago and I've been kicking around what the format is. I just, I just figured that out. I just figured out how I want to format and structure the show. Um, and maybe see what I, what I can do with, with some of the tech specs to make it a little bit more dynamic. So I'm running the test for it. 30, 40 minutes just to figure out what, what I'm, what I'm doing with some of the more, uh, technically precise stuff and whether it'll work or not. It might not, it might not work at all. Uh, it might be a total bust and, uh, and that's what I'm trying to sort out. So that's Saturday, April 25th, 8 30. If you grab your tickets an hour before the show, I will send the zoom link with the password, make sure everybody's in. And then we'll be get we'll we'll be uh, 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 you know uh, off to the races and trying to figure that out. So I've got that going on. Now all of these things, one of the things that I have to uh, 
remind myself of is all of these things don't occupy the same space. Um, so I kind of have to take my time and uh, be relaxed with it. And say everything's going to fall into place the way it'll fall into place. Um, I know how to compartmentalize. I know how to schedule out my day. I know how to manage my time. And it's just a matter of doing that. It's just a matter of taking care of those things and making sure that, um, oh boy, um, man, some people are just wild on the road, you know, uh, sorry, but it's, it's just a matter of making sure that I'm taking care of, uh, what I need to take care of in my own schedule. Um, and when all of these things occupy the span of one space, and what I mean by that is everything has to be done at 8.30 a.m. on Monday, April 20th. All of those things have to be done. No, they don't. Um, You know, it's it's all going to be taken care of in various different other blocks of time. That was kind of what I had to remind myself of. But I had that overwhelming anxiety plus the existential dread when I woke up this morning. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't think I've felt that level of it possibly since this quarantine began, possibly since maybe even the beginning of the year. Um, it's been a little while, you know, I'm, I'm regularly a pretty anxious person as is. Um, so that's nothing new. Uh just the level of of that anxiety was um, you know something that I hadn't particularly faced in quite some time but uh, but we're good we're good uh, I had to I had to get some uh, additional cables in order to try to make uh, some of the tech specs work and I think any time that I've had to spend money on anything during this quarantine time has been kind of nerve-wracking and I you know I had to I had to basically buy a, a cable so I could utilize my monitor that I bought years ago um, you know so that I could have two different screens that I'm working with and I think that'll also help my eyes um, quite quite frankly is if if I'm if I'm doing um, you know watching stuff on on that extra screen um, and you know, reading stuff on that extra screen and just increasing the font on my computer, it might help my eyes out a little bit. Um, so yeah, so that's our, that's our check-in and, uh, uh, it's the hundredth episode. I hope everybody's doing well. I hope, I hope your, your 420 is, is, uh, off to a good start, whether, whether you partake in, uh, the celebration or not. Um, so I'll start with, uh, with my thoughts on the whole cannabis situation that we're facing in this country. Um, I think it's absolutely absurd and I've thought this for, for a number of years. Uh, you know, once, especially once I like learned more about, uh, the, uh, good, you know, the, the positive aspects of, uh, of cannabis itself, uh, an ambulance going there but uh you know i ironically especially the medical uses of cannabis like there is there is a a extreme amount of positive use from cannabis uh and i've said this in my stand-up act is i've never heard of any sort of like negative stories come out of it i've never heard like the closest like even the stories i'm about to tell you have some you know, but that's mostly because I, i i overdid it these are stories of me personally um, making a choice to overdo it, um, and, and kind of learning my limits beyond that. But, you know, that's sort of part of it, but I've never had an experience on cannabis that has been like, holy shit, my life is ruined. Um, I've heard stories like that with, uh, with cigarettes, with alcohol, with various other drugs. Um, so what's my perspective on it is, uh, legalize it, legalize it. Why are we not like dude fucking Denver Colorado made a billion dollars in revenue that that uh you know they were like helping schools and shit 
And then there was a bunch of conservative, uh, you know, religious people that came out and were like, oh, this is drug money. This is, it's a plant. It would be like if fucking broccoli made a billion dollars and then like, you know, small business broccoli farmers were like, hey, we're going to give some of this revenue to help fucking schools and help like state infrastructure and like communities that need it. Would you deny it if, like, broccoli did that well? Because I can guarantee you that cannabis is a much more popular brand than broccoli. I'm not, I'm not a broccoli hater or anything, but I'm just, I'm, let's be real. If it came down to uh, eating a brownie with some cannabis in it, or eating a brownie with some broccoli in it, what are you going to choose? I know what I'm going to choose. You know, so it's ridiculous that it's uh, it, it, it's it's illegal, in my opinion. Never heard anybody get racist with uh, with cannabis, and if you have, you're smoking oregano. You gotta you gotta get to a different dealer. <laughs> you gotta you gotta talk to uh, you know, talk to your dealer. What are you getting? Might be getting some patchouli. No, shit's aggravated. We tried to smoke patchouli. Don't do it. Don't do it. This is a side note um, in terms of uh, in terms of experimenting. I did this sober when I was uh, 13 years old. Somebody paid me twenty dollars to snort uh, instant coffee, and I also don't recommend doing that. I was a bit of a whore when I was 13 because uh, I didn't have money and I needed it to purchase action figures and toys and to comic books and things of that nature <laughs> so somebody was like here's 20 bucks snort this thing I'd be like alright uh, I also ate weird shit um, ketchup and orange juice did that once don't do it it's not great and uh, definitely not worth the five dollars I got for that that one actually if somebody gave me twenty dollars to do that that that's a val- that's a good value for that but total sidebar but when I'm, whenever I've been high, I've never wanted to uh, to do any of that. I've never, I've never wanted to. <laughs> the notion of it being a gateway drug is such a bullshit notion. It's such a bullshit notion. I've never, I've, it's, it's been a gateway to snacks, but it's always been a gateway to responsible snacking too. It's always been a gateway to being like, you know, I think Pop-Tarts with Nutella in the middle of both the Pop-Tarts smashed together. That seems like a good idea. It's never been, (laughs) I've never been high to be like, what I need to do is mix some fucking ketchup and orange juice together. That's never been something that I've wanted to do. You know, it's been responsible snacking. It's taught you how to snack uh, in more creative and uh, pleasurable ways. Uh, Nothing too over the top and ridiculous. Which I think, uh, you know, th- that's that's more of a teenager's brain. That's uh, it's more of uh, uh, unregulated hormones kind of a situation, you know. Unregulated hormones and and poverty uh, create <laughs> such bad situations. Um, so I don't know why, uh, you know, uh, the the stigmas and stereotypes that come along with. Um, with cannabis, I think are uh, foolish. To be blunt about it, I think they're foolish. Uh, I think there there should be a nationwide federal uh, legalization of the damn plant. You know, uh, we also use it to really. It would also uh, incredibly transform the um, prison industrial complex, the criminal justice system, because that's used as a way to. Um, marginalized communities of color uh, you know there are uh, uh, more black people that are put into prison for uh, nonviolent drug offenses than there are white people despite the fact that white people and black people smoke weed at the same amounts um, you know why because uh, uh, cannabis is about equality cannabis is like I don't care who wants to see the world in a more beautiful perspective 
Everybody should see it. There's no racism involved in it. There's no inequality. There's no fucking uh, discrimination. That is a plant that wants everybody to be high. (laughs) And that's it. The other thing is hemp. Um, Hemp is, uh, is... I mean, th- this should be completely legal. It would completely transform, like, uh, food, clothing. Uh, it's just various different points of infrastructure. It's a very versatile plant. It's a very strong plant. Um, you know, so, like, us not fucking utilizing hemp in, in, a, in a positive manner, I think, is just, again, to put it bluntly, foolish. <laughs> We're being foolish uh, with this thing. So, uh, you know, that's where I come from. I do think that we should also legalize all of the drugs. We should legalize 100% of them, but that's not where it stops. You can't just legalize it and go, well, American freedoms, that'll probably fix everything. It won't. American freedoms, uh, if you if you give a bunch of primates unlimited freedom <laughs> without the guidance of the education system... Uh, We're going to do dumb things because we're primates. We're just going to try to put our dick in things. That's, you know, we think with our animal brain first. We think with the amygdala first. We don't think with the the rest of the emotional spectrum first. We haven't been trained or conditioned to do that, Uh, which cannabis will probably help us uh, do that a lot more. It will help us think uh, out of the framework of Uh, base animal instincts such as fear, aggression, uh, pleasure. That's all part of the amygdala there. It will widen the array of the emotional spectrum. Uh, But I do, I do think that we should legalize all drugs, but we should educate people on what these drugs will do. We should educate people on on what these drugs are capable of. And, uh, 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 you know, with that said, uh, we should have uh, places where if you would like to go try these drugs, you can go try these drugs under the care and supervision of a, uh, of a trained medical professional that knows how to handle these drugs, that knows what the right amount is, that knows how to administer these drugs in, the, in a safe manner. That way you, 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 you get rid of uh, illegal drug trafficking, narco trafficking, all of that stuff. Everything is safe. Everything is, um, you know, kept in a in an environment where where you can enjoy yourself. These drugs become uh, a way that we can even even u- utilize it for mental health purposes. And and if it's not utilized for mental health purposes, you can utilize it for uh, fun recreational purposes, for self exploration. Um, completely transform the way society is uh, 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 looked at. That's the way we could do it. But that's not, you know... It's not the way we look at drugs now. We look at drugs as something illegal and scary and all that sort of stuff. But if you know how to... If you know how to use your drugs, if you know what they do to your body how much to take to ensure that you're having uh, a good time, to ensure that you're not endangering your health uh, or the health of others. Yeah, it's going to make for a better society. So, uh, I got, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we won't, we won't go too, too, too long with this so you can continue enjoying your, your 420 uh, festivities, uh, you know, with whatever you're doing. Uh, but, um, yeah, I got two, two, two quick stories for you guys. Quick ish, quick for Krish. Uh, so the first one happens, um, a number of years ago, probably four or five years ago. I think four years ago is, is probably accurate. Um, it was, uh, it was in the fall and I'd taken this two month tour gone through this pretty rough breakup and, and my life had b- pr- pretty much been twisted um, a, a friend of mine was letting me stay with him um, very kind of him in Washington DC and I basically decided that I got to go on this tour for two months so I went on, on tour for I think longer than that I think I went for like 
almost three months uh, on the road. But I, I left in uh, the middle of August. I didn't come back until almost the, the end of uh, November. Like the week of Thanksgiving is when I really came back. Um, so that's what, August, September, October, November. Oh, yeah, uh, August, September, August, September, September, October. So about three months, something like that, right? Okay, long-ass tour. In the midst of this tour, I was down south. Gulf Coast area, and I was in, I was uh, going through Alabama, uh, you know, doing some shows in uh, Huntsville, Montgomery, uh, and then Mobile. Now, when I was in Mobile, I was couch surfing with a, with, with a, uh, with a cat, super, super, this guy was great, he was awesome, he was really fun to hang out with, Uh, and I'll describe that situation in in just a minute here, but, uh, you know, I basically had to extend my stay with him because, um, well, there was a hurricane happening, and uh, and I had some gigs in Florida, and I had to cancel these gigs because there was a hurricane happening. And the <laughs> what was kind of wild was, uh, first of all, the gigs were like one of them was basically at like this white supremacist biker bar uh, in, in in like uh, in Florida, and I was gonna go feature doing my style of comedy, right? This sort of lefty socialist like hey let's get along with each other here's the problem with uh, machismo and imperialism kind of comedy you know the anti-imperialism radical fucking left-wing socialist hippie commune comedy <laughs> perfect for the 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 uh, the white supremacist biker bar <laughs> And the booker was like, hey, the headline, I was going to feature, right? I was doing, I was going to do 25 to 30 minutes, uh, which I'm sure was going to go just swell, just great. And um, and I remember the booker was like, hey, the headliner's not going to be able to make it. Do you want a headline? And I was like, oh, man, um, first of all, I, want, I, I, don't, I have no guarantees that even if this wasn't a white supremacist biker bar, that I'm going to get out of this fucking place alive. And now you add a hurricane on top of that, there's almost a guarantee that I'm not going to. So I had to kind of wiggle my way around to be like, this seems like a real bad idea. And then like literally 15 minutes after I said that, she was like, uh, yeah, you're probably right. Um, gas just went up to four, 450 a gallon or something. And she's like, I don't want you to get caught in Florida and not be able to continue the rest of the way on your tour. And I was like, okay, so we canceled the gigs and I had to extend my stay in Mobile, Alabama. So, um, staying uh, with this with this fella, uh, he lives about 20 minutes outside Mobile, and he lives sort of uh, in in the in the sticks in the boonies a little bit. Nothing too scary or anything, you know, a nice uh, uh, nice little house. Um, what one maybe like a mobile not a mobile home it wasn't really a mobile home um, but it was a, it was a, you know a nice open field uh, open front yard open backyard and um, I pull up and I park my car and as I park my car I see this pig run to the fence and start blinking at me <laughs> I was just like what is happening and I see this like bigger hog fucking waddle over and then there's a dog that comes up and I was like this is crazy what is happening right now and he comes out and he greets me and you know uh, he's like this one's a younger pig Uh, the younger pig gets very excited Uh, the older hog ain't gonna do anything they act like dogs so if you let them sniff sniff you and kind of uh, get to know you a little bit they will chill out and uh, you know and then they'll hang out with you I was like sure man that's fine that seems that seems like, you know, that seems fine. And I, you know, the pigs smell me, and I uh, pet them. And they're very. I mean, they have fur. You know, if you've never pet a pig before, uh, they do have fur. Uh, the older pig was a little bit more bristly than the younger one was. The younger one was a little softer, uh, but they were fucking adorable. They were great. Just hanging out with these pigs. This adorable fucking hogs and shit. It was great. It was awesome. So, you know, I told him what was going on. He was like, yeah, you can, you know, crash the extra uh, two or three days before you have to make your way to uh, uh, Louisiana or whatever. 
So I was like, alright. Uh, so we had that taken care of. I felt pretty good about it. Um, and uh, so uh, I do my show in Mobile. Show was weird. Uh, that was the first time somebody yelled Roll Tide at me. Uh, yeah, I had never heard that particular uh, terminology before um, until, until that day. And I was just like, what? what's happening? Uh, so I got to learn what Roll Tide was. And then over the weekend, he was like, well, I'm having uh, some folks come over and we're going to have like a little dinner party and partake in some uh, in some festivities. I was like, sure, man, I, that sounds fun. I got I got nothing going on till till I got to leave on Monday, so you know, let's do it. Let's 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 have let's have a good time, you know. So we roll in, um, you know, and uh, uh, the comic that set up the show in Mobile also pops over, uh, and uh, you know, I. Uh, I, you know, eat some food. It was a good time. And then they were like, hey, we're going to partake in some herbs. Uh, and I was like, okay. And they pull out a bottle. That, and, and then they pull out a second bottle and duct tape it. And they essentially make this thing called what, what, is, what uh, some people might uh, refer to as a gravity bong. Uh, I had never done one of those before. I'm also not big on smoking. I'm not, I don't, I don't really, um, it's just not, it's just not something that I do very often. It makes me sleepy is usually what it does. I get pretty tired pretty quickly. Um, I'm not, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not like a fun person to be around in that situation. <laughs> uh, I've, I've like hyper for about 15 minutes and then it's just like bedtime. Uh, and I will literally fall asleep in the middle of a conversation. I've literally fallen asleep in the middle of a conversation. So, um, you know, I was like, all right, I'll try this thing. You know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I've never done this before. I, I will be, uh, careful. So they show me how to do it. And so, uh, so I did, it. I did that. Uh, I did the whole thing. I just, you know, took the whole rush of it and I started coughing immediately and uh, and it didn't stop uh, for like a I, I want to say a good five minutes. Like my my abs hurt from coughing that hard. And uh, it, and then like immediately after I stopped coughing, um, <laughs> I um, I was like immediately just fucking way too ripped like way too ripped and I didn't know what to do like I'm just kind of like holy shit and then they they wanted me to like take another hit and I don't I don't think I could at that point like physically I just couldn't um so I I might have taken another I don't remember if I took a second swig or not I felt like I shouldn't so I think I probably stopped but I was just like and then it and then it was one of those highs that just kept getting higher and higher and I was just like what the fuck is going like what am I doing um you know kind of that it was it was kind of like that situation and uh so I had to step outside and I stepped outside for a minute and uh I'm just kind of standing outside I'm listening to uh to the rain because it was raining and I'm listening to the rain kind of hit the tin roof and I was just like holy shit this is crazy I could, I like, I'm, I, I felt like I was seeing the fucking, like, sound. Uh, like, I was, like, I, I felt like I was seeing the sound vibrations of the rain hitting the tin. And the fucking hogs come over to me. And the older one, you know, kind of comes, plops down, and he looks at me. And I and then I, I look back at him, and I was like, yeah, man, I know. Like, I'm, I'm way too fucking high right now. Like, this is crazy. This is nuts. Uh, and then the little, like, the little one... Uh, big, and he'd been very friendly with me and would come up and like I'd pet him and stuff and I was just like holy shit I don't know if I can be around these hogs right now and then I also and then I got real self conscious because I was like I'm pretty sure these fucking pigs know I'm high man and uh, I, I, I don't know if they're judging me but I'm getting a judgy vibe like I'm getting a real judgy vibe from these hogs you know 
Like, these hogs are like, man, you did not understand what this fucking gravity bong was going to do. You misinterpreted it. Uh, and you fucked up. You fucked up, buddy. You know, you just, you just didn't do it right. That felt real judged. Uh, so, you know, go back inside. I would sit down for a few minutes. Everybody's kind of having, uh, you know, having fun with what's going on. They're playing some music. Uh, threw on some old Jimi Hendrix. Um, which, boy, I don't think I've heard Jimi Hendrix in a long time. Uh, that's a, a weird aside there for the moment. But uh, I remember talking to the comic who had come over to hang out. I remember talking to him. And I remember saying, like, I could really feel the music. Can't you really feel the music? I really feel this music. And he was like, yeah, man. Yeah, I bet you can't. Bet you're having a real good time. And I was like, I am. I am having a real good time with the music. Uh, and, and, you know, at this... At, I'm still getting higher. Like, I still feel like I'm getting higher and higher at this point. And I'd had so much to eat at, you know, that I, and and now it's starting to get to that high where, like, I'm losing equilibrium. Uh, (laughs) And I, like, got real concerned. And I think I went to the bathroom to, like, throw up. I can't remember. I have a vague memory of that. But essentially, like, I splashed some water in my face, uh, brushed my teeth, and I had to, like, go, I had to fucking just go to bed. And I, like, felt like I couldn't tell anybody because I didn't want anybody to think that, like, I couldn't handle what was going on with me. Like, I felt, again, I felt, like, real self-conscious. Um, so I, I, I took a step outside for just a moment, and, again, those, I saw those pigs, and the, and the older one kind of, like, looked up at me. And I was just like, bro, I'm still like, this is like getting real intense, right? Like I'm trying to like talk, talk it out with these pigs. Like maybe the pigs will, um, I don't know, be able to, uh, uh, help me out. Maybe the pigs will have like a a word of advice. Like I could connect with these, with these hogs. Right. And the, and they'll, they'll be like, yeah, man, just drink some water, you know, like, uh, get some juice or something, uh, you know, and just lay down, close your eyes, try to stay still. You know, uh, like I thought maybe some advice would come out of it. They didn't. They didn't. I just felt judged uh, by these hogs. You know, like I just felt like, like in their in, in their mind, they were just like, ah, fucking humans. These fucking bipedal assholes. You know, uh, they're just, they're just not doing the these this this plant right. You know, they're fucking smoking it out of plastic bottles and shit. Just cook it, cook it into some things. <laughs> So I went back in and I basically decided I got to go to bed, right? And I am like working my way. And then I saw the comic and the comic was like, hey, man, be careful. Take care of yourself. And I was like, I'm going to bed. <laughs> uh, and so they were they were very nice about it. They were like, yeah, I think that's a good idea, buddy. And <laughs> and they were basically like, we'll see you soon. Like, they were kind of like, you know, like, you know how you, like, talk to a child um, that is that is clearly, you know, um, had, like, that, that, is, that is, like, not ready to go to bed but needs to go to bed. Uh, they could kind of see, like, I was in that phase. They were, you know, they went and just pat me on the head, give me a little head tuffle there. And he was like, you know, take care of yourself. Make sure you're going to be okay. And I went to bed. And it was tough getting to sleep, to be honest. I just remember having a real hard time falling asleep because I just felt like I, like I was still fucking getting higher. And I was like, this is fucking crazy. And, I, and then it got to that point where I was like, I'm stuck like this. This is me forever. I don't think I'm getting out of this. Uh, You know, I was like, I gotta, I gotta just tighten the fucking sheets around my bed. And then I was like, I think these pants are too hot. So I slept in my boxers. Uh, I locked the door. I fucking just tightened the goddamn sheets around me. And I was like, if I constrain myself, I don't have pants. I'll be fine. 
And eventually I did fall asleep. I think I fell asleep for like 14 hours or something. Uh, Because I don't remember getting up till about 12.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon the following day. Um, it was, I mean, it was, it was a while. Uh, and you know, I, I talked to, I talked to the couch surfer and he, he he was just, he was very nice about it, but he kind of had to laugh about it. And of course you have to fucking laugh about it, right? Like, this is such a weird, goofy thing to happen to somebody. So he laughed about it and he was like, yeah, it just sounds like, you know, you got a, got a little too high. You know, it sounds like it sounds like you overdid it. You you went past your limit there. You know, so that was a good lesson to learn uh, in uh, understanding my limit. So I'm going to tell you guys a, a second story. I wasn't really going to tell this story today. I was going to tell you guys a different story. Um, but. The story I'm not going to tell will be a bonus track uh, on my album when my album comes out. A bonus track specifically available only on Bandcamp. It's the only place I'm putting bonus tracks. So uh, if you want to hear that other story, that's where that'll be. Uh, But uh, yeah, Uh, this story happened when I, one of the uh, first years that I was working the road, I think like within my first two or three years of being on the road, um, I was working a club in Lansing, Michigan. It was, uh, I want to say the second or third club that I had uh, been booked to host. And I was very excited because I was opening for a comic by the name of Dave Landau that weekend. And uh, Dave was a uh, very super, by the way, super fucking funny comedian. Uh, he just did my podcast uh, a couple, maybe a week or two ago was the episode that got released. Oh wait, this is not the best road to be on for this sort of stuff. I'm sorry if there's a lot of disturbance uh, in the audio. But I was working, uh, I was working this club in Lansing, and uh, you know after the. Uh, Dave Dave Landau was not going to be uh, there the first night. So this was uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And, uh, you know, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday, uh, one show Thursday. So the Thursday night show, they had a different headliner come in from, um, I think, Detroit or something. Uh, because Dave was uh, doing a, uh, a television show at the time. I think it might have been Last Comic Standing. I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember that detail. But um, we had a different uh, headliner. And uh, there was a tradition. You know, it was the first time that I had ever been at that club. And it was the first time the feature had ever been at that club. So the, the club's tradition was... Uh, to uh, have a shot for everybody before the show. So we did a shot, right? And it was like, all right. Uh, some of you might remember, not a fan of shots. <laughs> an old man, just like to sip a gin. Uh, but, uh, you know, we did the shot. It's fine. Did the show. The show goes uh, as... as uh, uh, pretty decent, uh, you know, uh, nobody hated me, that's pretty decent in my book, show ends, people hang out, you know, um, I get a beer, uh, and this is a big Lansing beer, so it was like a tall, like a tall beer, and I'm drinking that, uh, and, uh, you know, everybody's kind of hanging out after the show, so the show ends around 10-ish, 10, 10, between 10 and 10.30, uh, people bullshit with the headliner, bullshit with the feature, and myself. Uh, so all the audience leaves around, um, I don't know, 11, 11, 15 maybe. From that point on, uh, the rest of the staff are hanging out in the office. It's kind of bullshitting, you know, having a, having some extra drinks and stuff. So then... To celebrate the success of the first show of the weekend, another rounds of shots comes around. 
So now we're at two shots, one giant beer, and then a second giant beer for me. So I was like, all right, once I finish this beer, I'll kind of drink some water, uh, cool off, and then we'll we'll head back to, uh, you know, where I'm crashing. And uh, in the midst of this second beer, the feature goes, I have some, you know, marijuana in the car. I can go grab it if everybody would like to partake in some. We're like, yeah, sure. So we did, so that happened. So now I'm a little drunk and I got a little high. Not a good combination. Not a good combination, you guys. Uh, this this is like six or seven years ago that this happened. And I got to that point of high where I'm having an intern, like I'm responding to things, but I've come to that point where I'm very unsure whether I'm responding to things out loud or not. I have no idea. I have no idea whether I'm responding to things out loud. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, right? And the feature who I'm sitting right next to, uh, he, he, you know, says something or, or tells a short story about something. And, it, and I, I had a retort to it. Uh, a retort that I thought was uh, rather funny. And I was waiting for him to, to react to the funniness of my retort to what he said. So I just kind of stared at him for a minute. You know, just waiting for that validation. And I got to the point where I was like, I don't know if I actually said that out loud. And now I'm just kind of staring at this person I just met. And then he turns to me and goes, hey, you all right? And I panicked. Um... Because now it's like, well, I don't know how long I've been staring at this dude. I don't know if everybody else saw me just randomly stare at this dude. It's starting to become very evident that I might have not said the thing that I thought I said out loud. So I'm just arbitrarily staring at this guy, waiting for a reaction that isn't going to come from a statement that has been verbalized. And I just kind of panicked and I stood up and I said, I have to go home now. And everybody's like, okay. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're all gonna try to go home because it's like almost three o'clock in the morning. Uh, and I was like, okay, but I have to go home now. And they're like, okay. And I just fucking bounced out of the the office, and I don't go to my car. I uh, I go to the bathroom. Uh, I you know, and then I like splash water on my face. I'm trying to like get my shit together and I walk out and uh and everybody's just like hey man are you okay and I was like yeah, yeah, yeah everything's fine everything's fine they're like okay so we step outside and I'm holding on to the railings um you know because there was a little walkway to get into the club and I'm holding on to the to the railing on the walkway and uh, I'm, I'm bullshitting with, with the last two members of the staff that were, that were locking up and going to be on their way. They park right in front of the little railing. I parked a little way down. I could see my car. My car was approximately 10 feet away from where I was standing, probably. Right At this point, who knows? Uh, it could have been a little bit less, a little bit more. I don't really know. But I'm kind of talking to, to wake myself up a bit. And they go, all right, get home safe and hand me a bottle of water. So I go, will do. I drink a bunch of the water. I go, thank you. They get in their car and they leave. And I start, I I decide that I'm going to walk towards my car. And I take maybe, maybe two steps before I lose all balance and my legs it's just like my legs decided not to be legs anymore and I was and I felt myself like falling face forward so I had to like brace myself 
and I used my upper body to shove myself against the wall, smack my head against the wall, and then I, I like rolled on the wall and I slid down the wall. And now I'm just sitting outside this club. Uh, and I'm staring out into the street and I had a decision to make. And I was like, you know, I could just stay here on the street and, uh, and not worry about anything. It's not that, it's not that bad out. It's pretty cool. Springtime. It's about 68 degrees. I could just stay here. Then I thought, I feel like the club wouldn't particularly appreciate me kind of just sleeping outside (laughs) of the club. And I don't think they need the press of homeless man found outside club uh, or homeless comedian found outside of comedy club. Uh, You know, the sad truth of entertainment in America or some whatever byline they want to throw there, right? So I think I ended up sitting there contemplating my decision for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. And I was like, okay, my car's not that far away. I can make it. If I stand up and I push off the wall, I can make it to my car. Uh, So I stood up and I pushed off the wall and I bolted to the car and I made it. My legs were fine at this point, by the way, right? Like, it wasn't like uh, I'd lost the use of my legs or anything. (laughs) I think I just, like, I think I just had, like, a stagger moment. uh, And I lost all balance. And I thought my legs weren't working anymore. Um, Then I sat in my car, probably for, like, another 20, 25 minutes, uh, drinking this water. And, you know, where I was staying wasn't that far away. I was maybe maybe eight, ten minutes away. Felt a little bit better. And uh, and I pulled out, and I drove back to the place. Made it back safe. Everything was fine. And I, you know, was crashing on, on someone's couch. Uh, got to the couch, and then I woke up next the next morning, and I was like, ow, my head hurts. Like, right here, my head hurts. And uh, and I was like, why does it hurt? And then I remembered, oh, when I was falling, in order to prevent myself from falling face forward, um, I shoved my whole upper body towards the wall to brace myself. And I smacked my head into the wall and scraped it so I had this like this this scrape under like just just a little under my hairline, so you couldn't really tell that I scraped my head. Uh, and I was just like, "Oh no!" So I show up to the club the the that day, cause I and I'd like it to shower, and I felt where it was, and you know, everything was fine. Uh, And I went back to the club. And at the end of the night, you know, so the club manager comes up to me and she's like, do you want to start with shots? And I was like, please don't, please don't do that to me. She's like, what? And I was like, listen, last night was not great. And she was like, yeah, you were a little, you were a little goofed, a little goofy last night. And I was like, I know, Uh, I don't, I don't want to do that again. I'm going to have one of those tall beers and that's it. And that's the whole, like, I'm going to drink that the whole night. And she's like, all right, suit yourself. Uh, <laughs> she was like, do you need me to come pick you up tomorrow so you can have a, a fun night out? And I was like, no, I don't. I don't ever need to have fun night outs ever again. I'm never having fun. <laughs> ever in the history of fun. <laughs> 
you know, the rest of the weekend was fine. Uh, there was one show that I remember just fucking bombing my ass off, uh, telling this story uh, called uh, that that uh, called the letter, which is available on the band camps, uh, and it's just it's a, a story of one of the stupidest fucking things I did in high school. Uh, but it's like eight or nine minutes, and once you start. It's like there's no exit point to that story. <laughs> uh, so I so I just like I don't know, just I I, I kept doing it. I bombed my ass off. Uh, and this is one of those things I remember. Um, the owner of the club came up to me, and she said, "That's a good story. You took a big risk, uh, and you stuck with it. And I think uh, I, you know that's a good call because I think the audience still respects you a little bit." That, that you you delivered the story the way you delivered it. And Dave came up and talked to me a little bit. And he was like, that was pretty risky. It, you know, um, I, I don't think I would have done something like that. But, uh, you know, it's a good story. There, I would polish it up and I would look for a way out of it if it's not going well. Um, and he was like, there might not be an exit strategy, but, you know, you might want to figure out what, what some alternative directions are um, where you can still tell the story and make sure that you know you don't bomb uh, but he was like you know good to t- good on you to take the take the risk and stuff so that was really cool I felt like that was really cool it was really nice of him to say he did not have to say something like that to me um, so you know just not another lesson I learned can't drink and smoke at the same time it will uh uh, ruin my life or potentially get close to ruining my life. Uh, but those are the two stories. Those are the two uh, 420 related stories about me not understanding uh, what uh, the, you know, the, the effects of uh, marijuana are, what my personal limits are and how I learned some of my personal limits. That's the important thing where we're getting educated. We learn about our personal limits in these sort of situations. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, I, a little little special uh, 420 100th episode. This is our this is the 100th road reflection. Um, so uh, we we went back to the basics. We went back to what what this initially was which was me talking about some stuff ideas and topics and things of that sort um in my car that is uh what this show initially started as uh whenever i started i think i started in 2018 uh and it was really just a a way for me to stay accountable to myself um and talk about some of the things that i'm working on and, uh, and then it evolved into talking about uh, news stories and topics and giving tour updates um, and things like that. So um, if, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, um, doing, one of the, doing like a little storytelling thing is going to be part of the Zoom show. I don't know if I'll do it uh, during the test show, per se. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'll if I'll do it during the test show, but I will. Um, I will do probably tell one story of, of some kind during the actual Zoom show itself. So if you want to be a part of that test show, help me figure out. Uh, check out the format. Give me some some feedback. Uh, see what technical specs I need to work out. Uh, Saturday, April twenty fifth. Spots are limited to ten people. Uh, and um, it's free and then I'll also talk about uh, setting up another one figuring out a day that will work out like a day of the week that will work out Uh, you know is it going to be a Friday is it going to be a a, a Sunday I I would do it keep doing it on on the Saturdays but uh, I know Ron Placone and Graham Elwood do their living room series on Saturdays, and uh, and I know I have some crossover fans with them. I know some people that are fans of uh, of Ron and Graham, and I'm I'm per- I'm also a fan of Ron and Graham. So I don't I don't want 
one, I don't want people to have to make that decision of either coming to watch my thing or Ron and Graham's thing. Um, uh, and uh, I also don't want to, like, they have a bigger following than I do for sure. So it would also just be silly on my part to try to uh, over overly compete with them in, in that regard. So I would rather not do that. Uh, so, um, you know, is, is Friday night a better thing? Is Sunday night a better thing? Is a weekday night a better option to try to do, set up a show? Uh, you know, set up a, a, the, the Citizen Revolution comedy series. That's what I'm going to call it. Um, and we'll do a couple of them. I'll try to, I'll, I'll, I'll try to limit it. Um, there's going to be some changing elements to it. There's going to be some consistent elements to it. So I'll try to, um, uh, sort some of that stuff out so that if you, if you do want to come and check out multiple of these, uh, because I'm going to start it smaller, right? I'm, I'm going to start it with, I don't know, uh, 15 people for the first show. It'll be $5 tickets. Um, and then, uh, you know, patrons and sustaining members get free entrance to it. I'll, I'll give you guys a code so we can keep everything consolidated. And then the other thing too is if you are, uh, you know, struggling and do want to come check out the show and you're like, Hey, I lost my job. Don't really have an income trying to figure out how to pay rent, but I do want to come check this thing out. Um, and, and be a part of the audience. Great. I'll give you a code and you can, uh, come check it out for free. Uh, I'll try to, I'll try to have a couple of those spots available, uh, for, you know, every show. Um, and uh and go 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 from there um so yeah I'll, I'll talk a lot more about that after saturday after i figure out the test show and what that's going to be uh but i hope you guys enjoyed this one this is the big 100 the big 100 show uh going back to some storytelling stuff and tomorrow we'll be back. We'll be talking about some news stories. We'll be talking about some labor movement stuff. We'll be talking about some candidates that, uh, that, that you, should, uh, you should know, you know, some real progressive candidates, some real bold, radical candidates, um, you know, similar to what we talked about on Sunday. With, um, with um, the Green Party candidates that we did. We talked about Howie Hawkins and Dario Hunter, so we'll talk about we'll talk about some more of those, uh, and I, I will be working on Forkful of Noodles. I will be working on new stand-up material. I will be working on Taboo Table Talks. Uh, so I am putting out a bunch of shit for you guys uh, to check out, to uh, educate, enlighten, and empower yourselves through so that we don't have to uh, continue repeating history. And hopefully, while we're not continuing to repeat history, uh, we can have some fun and laughs along the way, uh, as, as cheesy as that sounds. Uh, thank you guys for supporting the show for as long as you have. Thank you guys for tuning in, sharing, uh, becoming the sustaining members, making the donations that you guys do. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the uh, conclusion of episode number uh, 100, the, the, the centennial episode of, uh, Road Reflections. So, uh, I'd normally never make a big deal out of these things, but I figured let's do something minorly special for it. Um, till tomorrow, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the road.